Hi guys, today we're going to look at uh, the editing I did on some of the photographs from one of the workshops. Uh, I'm going to share with you what I did in Photoshop, um, some of the tools I used uh, and how I prepared those images for social media. So here we are in uh, Camera Bridge. Uh, this is the image that I want to use from the uh, smoke workshop that uh, we did a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to open that image in Camera Raw. We'll make a start in Camera Raw. So the first thing I like to do when I'm in Camera Raw is I like to go to my uh, Tone Curve. And what I like to do is I like to just mess with the, the saturation a little bit. I always tend to put a bit of an S curve in there um, before I start. Um, just gives me a bit more colour in the highlights and in the blacks. It just makes the blacks a little bit more. Go back to the, uh, to the normal part of uh, Camera Raw. And what I want to do is, just on this occasion, is just bring the highlights down a little bit so that I've got a bit more uh, texture in the skin. Um, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight from there and I'm going to open the image. Uh, my image will open straight up into Photoshop uh, and then we'll do our work from Photoshop from there. Okay, so that's my image in Photoshop. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Um, one of the things that when working with Brooke is she she likes me to uh, to remove um, part of her facial features. She uh, she doesn't like me to have um, this part of the uh, photograph on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the spot healing brush uh, and I'm going to do some work on this image uh, and just to smooth the skin out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of that. I'll just drag that background copy to the uh, to the plus which gives me a copy of that background I'm going to rename that background skin okay that just lets me know that we're dealing with the skin so I've gone to my spot healing brush normal type um, and I can control the size of that with my bracket keys I can make it smaller or I can make it larger with my bracket keys uh, the smaller you use the better it's more precise um, and you can see that as I do that, um, some of the, the little blemishes um, do disappear. Just a little bit. They're only natural blemishes. Um, and I am going to soften the skin off in a moment um, that will help us dial those out a little bit. Um, but it just makes it easier at the beginning just to, uh, just to take a few of those out. So what I'm going to look at is the is the mole that uh, Brooke doesn't like on her photographs. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make my selection tool about the right size um, so I can select it just that. Uh, when we look at it, there is a bit of a halo around there. So I am just going to spot heal around the halo just to dial things back in a little bit and to make sure that we can see it's not there anymore. If I toggle that on and off, you can see it's quite different. Now, we've got the image that we want to look at, um, and some of the marks have gone. Okay, uh, with Brooke, obviously there's not a lot of work to do. Very pretty lady, so we don't need to do too much. I'm just going to have a look at just smoothing a little bit off on the neck so that when I get my final image it gives me the the soft semi porcelain texture that I'm going to look for in this okay um, what I can do now is if I want to I can merge these two layers um, get rid of that so I'm going to go to uh, layer and I'm just going to go down to flatten image. So there's the image that we're working on now that helps us realize that we've got rid of all the little things we don't want to get rid of. Um, Brooke's quite a beautiful lady, so we don't have to do too much on this. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to soften the skin off. Um, first of all, though, what I like to do is I like to just give the eyes a bit of a pop. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy that merged background down again. Um, 
and I'll just call this eyes for now uh, and I'll show you what work I do on the eyes so if I zoom in onto the eyes all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to dodge and burn a little bit uh, so if I go to my dodge tool again with the bracket keys I can make my cursor larger or smaller and I just tend to make the whites of the eyes a little bit brighter they are quite bright on this because of the lighting that we used um, but also I am going to just bring up the actual eyes themselves a little bit brighter um, and also what I want to do is I want to darken parts of the eyes just to give that contrast so I'm just going to darken the edges of the lashes and also I just want to make sure that where my pupils are black are darkened a little bit and also we, I like to give emphasize the halo around the eyes a little bit just to give that contrast um, looking at it it doesn't seem a lot of difference until you toggle it on and off toggle it on and off we get a bit of a pop okay so again um, with that I'm going to flatten my layers so that now I have my layers all together my little adjustments that I've done to Brooke are complete what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to soften the skin a little bit um, and the way I do uh, skin softening without softening everything else is uh, I'll copy the background again I know it seems a bit of a faff copying it all the time but it just allows me to show you um, how much I'm toggling it back on and off um, so that I can see where we are I'm going to rename that that background skin and I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur to this so I'm going to go to filter I'm going to go to blur uh, and Gaussian blur so if I toggle down to the skin we can see the amount of blur that's been added to this skin so I want to I want to be about between seven and eight I'll take it down to seven point yeah seven point six will do okay unfortunately that's done the whole image so the whole image is now blurred so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask to that um, Adding a white mask does nothing, it allows everything to show through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, fill tool, if I can find the bucket at this point. There we go, my paint bucket tool. And what I'm going to do is make sure I'm clicked on the on the mask and I'm going to colour that in black. Colouring it in black means that none of the skin is showing through. Okay. So none of that softness is coming through now. It's just the image as it was. I'm going to go to a brush. Uh, I'm going to select um, a soft brush uh, to work on. It gives us a bit of a softer edge. Uh, and with that soft brush, if I select on the mask and change my color to white, whenever I paint on that skin, it's going to allow that blur to show through. So I'll take that brush now and I'm going to paint on the skin so I just go around and I paint all around the, the, the facial features and that Gaussian blur just allows that to soften off allows that blur to show through but on our mask I'm just rushing this a little bit at the moment just so we can see what we do um, zoom in where you need to go back to your brush and just bring the places that you want soft we just paint along there we've got to be careful that we don't lose all the features by painting over everything so we've just got to be a bit careful to keep some of the features in there um, on this particular day when we shot this, um, this the studio setup that we was using 
wasn't particularly warm therefore um, there are a little bit of imperfections on the skin in the fact that um, goosebumps uh, should through so what I can do is I can just clean this up if I want to move this image around if I press the space bar uh, and I can click and drag and it will allow me just to pull my picture around where I need it I'll just quickly go over a few things so we can see that I can get rid of those goosebumps you can see them quite heavily on there with the Gaussian blur showing through it just smooths those goosebumps out a little bit makes our image that a little bit more of that porcelain skin that we're, we're trying to achieve without going too far um, there's no more skin on that so I'm gonna zoom out click the zoom button and alt and it'll allow me to zoom out so I've got my image there with the skin you can see on the mask um, the white areas I've painted where the Gaussian blur will show through I switch that on and off you can maybe see a little bit if I do it on the skin you can see the, the effect we've created um, it may be a little a little bit too much so I can go to my opacity bring my opacity down a little bit I usually set my opacity to about 65 70 um, so that I still remain some of the skin texture in there What I am going to do is I'm just going to look at Brooke's hand there. I missed out the hand because along this area, um, I'm just going to paint on there. Just to make all the skin areas match. There we go. So I'm going to flatten that layer now. Flatten image. I'll zoom out. And we can see now that the eyes have popped um, the skin's a little bit softer um, I have got a few marks on the background if I one of the things is that we don't always have the, the best of backgrounds so sometimes we get a little bit creased on there if I go let me zoom in a little bit there's a couple of ways I can do this but I'm just going to use a spot healing tool at the moment for that one particular crease so just check that spot healing tool across there and just play a little bit with the area around and it just dials the crease out a little bit makes it a little bit more um, acceptable to see image off okay so there we go I'm gonna flatten my layers flatten image there we go so that's pretty much what I do you can you can highlight a few other places or soften other places off if you wish but that's pretty much what I do um, the only other thing I would do on there is I have a copyright brush uh, copyright action set on here so I alter my copyright add my copyright to my my photographs with one click uh, I can show people how to do that at a later stage and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finalize my image ready I, I'm going to um, I'm going to add a high pass filter to this just to sharpen it off so what I need to do in this is I need to copy my background again so I'll go to copy my background go to filter and I go to other and high pass uh, and you'll see on here that uh, it's not much of an image left but I usually use the radius of about eight uh, click OK obviously that's not the image we want so we need to go to our blend mode go to our blend mode and I'm gonna go to overlay so if I look now at my image especially the eyes yeah we've gone from soft to absolute sharp um, social media tends to take a little bit of quality away from our images just doing that for me makes our makes my images just that little bit more crisp um, so now you found that secret out of me uh, I'm going to go merge my layers again flatten image um, I have brushes already made here that have got my logo on um, of my business so I'm gonna to go to my brush I'm gonna just go pick the brush I want if I can find it in cow brush there we go okay uh, as you can see it's got my image on my logo for my business so I can make that larger or smaller uh, and on this instance I like I always like to make my logos 
sort of match the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set sample eyedropper and I'm going to sample a bit of Brooks skin there. Come on there. So when I go to my brush now, they when I when I paste, it's going to be um, Brooks skin color, which merges things together. So there we go. Uh, and now I'm going to go to file, save as, and I can save as however I want, but I'm going to, in this instance, I'm going to save as JPEG, um, because that's what social media like, uh, and it's also easier for me to deal with um, for um, sending out images to clients. So I'm going to save that. I save it as max, maximum quality. And that, guys, is pretty much how I edit my photographs for social media.